A Returning Appetite by J. Neal It's 7.15 in the evening. It must be dinner time since I've just walked into Shea Michael, my favorite restaurant. Well, I say favorite and what I really mean is usual. Usually at dinner time I usually end up here. The food isn't bad, it isn't particularly good either, but at least the portions are large. I mean, a person of my size just doesn't get along with Nouvelle Cuisine and dainty meals. Michael himself greets me out the door and offers to hang my coat for me. He's gotten to know me pretty well in the almost 19 months that I've been without Ken. Michael's too discreet to ever mention it, of course, but his knowing makes it all easier to deal with. He just takes me to my table for one without drawing attention to my oneness. Michael quietly suggests the chef's special for the day, stuffed pork chops with new potatoes and asparagus. Yes, yes, pork chops sound fine. Naturally, it will be a couple of pork chops, exactly two pork chops, a pair of pork chops stuck happily ever after, a pork chop duet forever bonded in death by exquisite stuffedness. Nineteen months and it still hurts. People told me it would get better. I had to get past it, life would go on, but they never said when. Nineteen months of this fucking shit and no end in sight. It's so lonely being lonely. I hate the empty feeling that I can't seem to shake, the lack of any reason to get up in the morning. I hate the ache that kills my appetite for food or for sex. Look at all the people in here. Pairs of people eating pairs of pork chops and enjoying every bite because they don't have to go home alone and try to remember how to keep on living. They will all go home tonight with somebody who will keep alive their memory of sex, of love, of being with someone and feeling complete. I'd like to feel happy again. Honest. I'm sure that I was happy once. I know that I used to smile a lot. Ken always said he liked my smile. Clueless people would ask me why I would want to hide my beautiful smile with a beard. Now they tell me that my beard makes it look sad. <laughs> Frankly, I think they've all got an anti-beard attitude. I used to think that my beard made me look sexy. Really hot the way the brown fades into the blonde around my mouth, but... I've forgotten what sexy is like, so who cares? I guess I keep it mostly out of habit now. Chris brings my plate of food. Sure enough, there are two pork chops, but they don't look at all bad tonight. I suspect Chris is one of those anti-beard people. I bet most of the people in this restaurant are anti-beard people. Except for the guy in the booth against the wall. He has a beard and he's laughing right now, not looking the least bit sad. He must be telling a joke to that guy he's with. I wonder whether it's a business dinner, or maybe it's a friend, or more likely his partner. He does have a nice beard, though. I only got Ken to try growing in his beard once, but that didn't last for long. He complained that the silvery patches made him look older than he wanted. I couldn't convince him that the color contrasts were distinctive, and that the beard was fun to chew on, so off it came. Now this guy's beard isn't so thick as Ken's, but it's short and it's lush, and dark brown color all over. It grows up high on his cheeks and makes echoes of the wrinkles around his eyes when he laughs. And it grows in just close enough around his lips to outline his smile. It's a nice smile. And what a nose this guy has. His may be the most beautiful nose I've ever seen. Long but not too long. Long enough to give a certain elegance to his face, perfectly proportioned. It rises smoothly from the joining of his dark eyebrows and drops at a majestic angle down his face until it slows and widens slightly before flowing gracefully around his nostrils and disappearing into his lush mustache. He smiles and the edges curl up ever so slightly, making ovals of his nostrils. His is a decidedly erotic nose. And the way he eats makes these pork chops look much better than they really are. His hands are pretty big, and I like his short, fat fingers with the little brown hairs between his knuckles, hair that gets enticingly denser as it crawls over his wrist and up his arm under his shirt sleeve. I bet that fur marches right up his arm where his muscles twitch when he lifts his fork to his mouth. Without breaking rhythm, his lips part and his tongue reaches out to meet the food as his fork slides into his hungry mouth, depositing its load, and slides out again through his closed lips. Oh, to be a pork chop on his plate right now. He looks like he's a sensitive kind of guy, too. Like he'd know just where to touch me when. How to hold me in those big arms of his and drive this loneliness away. 
He'd hold me hard and tight right up against his big chest, stroke my hair and whisper in my ear that everything's okay, that I don't have to be alone again. How could one man be so sweet and caring? How can I possibly think I know anything about him just from the way he looks? How stupid can I get? I've got to stop staring at him. He's going to look up any second now and see me sitting here mooning at him like some teenage girl. And then what is he going to think? Hey, why should I think that he'd think anything at all? Why should he even care if I'm staring at him like I could ever get a date with him? Like, why the hell am I even thinking about getting a date with him? Stop staring and dreaming up the shit. Oh, damn. Drop my knife right in the middle of my plate and wake everyone up, why don't I? Shit, 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 shit. I hate when people look because I do something stupid. I can't even hold on to my silverware while I eat. Thank you, thank you, but that's the end of tonight's entertainment. You can all go back to eating now. I'll just pick up my knife and continue eating, and maybe we can forget about this little debacle. He's looking at me. I can feel him looking at me right now. Fuck. He sees me for the total idiot I am. Should I look up, show him that I'm not a wimp, maybe smile a little? Hey, it was just an accident. Could happen to anyone. I'm a really nice guy once you get to know me. Why well, am I even think he's going to think anything? Get over it. Look up. What beautiful eyes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Remember to breathe out. He blinks, releasing me, and looks back towards his dinner companion. I blink and exhale. I don't know why it was holding my breath. That must be what breathtaking beauty is like. What eyes they are. Intense brown, penetrating right to my soul and reading me completely in that one glance. It felt like he saw my whole life laid bare just looking into my eyes. His eyes are so deep, so complex, so caring, so sensitive. I could see that he's exactly the person I was imagining. Jeez. I've got to trade this overactive imagination for something a little more realistic. Honestly, I don't have much of an appetite left for the food that's still on my plate. But I've got to finish eating or else he'll notice I'm acting weird. Did he smile? I'm sure I saw a little bit of a smile before he looked away. He might have just been laughing at me. A disdainful smile for a guy who can't hold the silverware. Maybe it was a smile that said he knew what I was thinking every absurd thought. Maybe he was thinking the exact same things, though. Maybe his little smile meant that he was thinking about me exactly what I was thinking about him. Sure. Just like that, I find perfect love while eating a pair of mediocre pork chops. I've got to get a life before I go completely to pieces thinking crazy shit like this. But suddenly, every time I close my eyes, ridiculous romantic images flood in. I blink and I'm on the beach, the sand still warm from the big red setting sun. Laying in his arms, my head rests on his furry chest. The sound of his heartbeat is so soothing. I smell his warm skin, the salt water in his swimming suit accenting his own scent. All I see is layers of damp hair slacked against his belly, dotted with grains of sand. I hear his breathing in my ear, my head rising and falling with each breath. His arms tighten around me, and I know that everything will be better from now on. Who am I to think he'd ever hold me like that, or even say boo to me? What could a gorgeous bear like him possibly find desirable in a wreck like me? No one likes a person who's sad all the time. But when you're sad all the time, how the fuck do you keep from looking sad all the time? I close my eyes and we're curled up together in front of a wonderful big log fire, drinking hot chocolate. Hot chocolate. We haven't said anything for what seems like hours. We just sit close to each other, his hand over mine, being together, listening to the logs hiss and crack. Talking isn't necessary with a love as deep and close as ours. He sips some chocolate and looks over into my eyes, reflections from the fire dancing in his. He leans towards me and his lips meet mine. I don't know why he's having this effect on me. I thought I'd given up all this foolish romantic crap long ago. Now all I know is that I'm getting pretty worked up and need to dish this depression or I'm never going to find my way back to sanity. I close my eyes and his arm reaches around my naked chest from behind to pull me closer. My back is warm from his body next to mine. I feel him laying behind me, his breath on the back of my neck. 
the curve of his belly above my butt, his legs entwined with mine. As he moves his hand idly across my chest, I feel his dick harden along the crack of my ass. My dick, too, starts to swell with desire. I want him more than I've wanted anything in a long time. I long for him to take me and give me that sweet, tender loving I've been yearning for. With my luck, he's probably a size queen and wouldn't give a dick like mine the time of day. No doubt he has a perfect dick that gets big and hard and thick and big balls, too. Such a dick the world has rarely seen, the likes that can command the attention of any man he chooses. Look at him. Look at his irritating air of self-confidence that says, I've got a big dick so you can go suck rocks. I really, really hate people like that. I've got to talk to him. He can ignore me or laugh at me or spit in my face, but I've got to talk to him before I leave or I may never get out the door of this restaurant. His check's just come. He'll be leaving soon. Quick, think of something before he gets away. W what would I say? I can't say, gosh, you're beautiful. Would you like to spend the rest of your life with me? I wonder what he looks like naked. I bet his entire body is hairy. I bet that smooth, thick hair sticking up the top of his shirt goes all the way down to his toes. Big toes! Big feet and hairy ankles! He'd probably close his eyes and grunt if I sucked on his toes, brushing the hair up and down his leg with my hand, pressing my tongue between each toe. I want to lick his ankles, lick his legs all the way up to his ass. Thick legs, meaty thighs, and a big hairy ass. Instead of these pork chops, I should have been eating his hairy asshole, licking the hair on his butt into swirls on his cheeks. That would make him grunt all right sticking my tongue up his asshole and licking his ass cheeks. Grunt bear, turn around so I can see your dick. Your perfect, big, hard, thick dick. I touch his balls with my tongue and inhale deeply his sweet, luscious scent. The soft flesh of his hard dick rests gently on my cheek. I brush it with my beard and caress it with my lips, kissing up its stiff length until my mouth is at its very end. With the tip of my tongue, I draw little circles around his piss slit, and his dick jerks away each time my tongue slides over the top. I grab his dick with my lips, holding it still so I can tickle it with my tongue, breathing hot air out to make cool spots on where it's wet. I draw his dick into my mouth and hold it there. I can feel his pulse in my mouth. My moist, warm mouth. I close my eyes and hold his dick in my mouth and move my hand slowly up his hairy belly until I reach his tits and feel his hard nipples between my fingers. I squeeze and rub and he starts to squirm as he tries to pump my mouth with his dick. I'm rubbing his stiff nipples and thinking how good it would feel to have him fucking me right now. To have his fat, stiff dick up deep inside my ass. To ride his dick like he's never felt before, riding him until we're both ready to come. Shit! He's gone! Where'd he go? I didn't even see him leave! Shit! Fuck this! Fuck! 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 How could I let him get away like that? I mean, he was just here, and now my last chance for love has left! He was so beautiful, so perfect, and I let him just walk away without saying anything to him! I've never seen him eating here before, and he'll never be back again! Never! He looks so warm, so sensitive, so caring, somebody I could finally fall in love with for the rest of my life! All right, leave the money, put the wallet away, get up and walk towards the lobby. I don't know whether I can make it home or even get out the door. Just keep moving, get your coat on, put it on, keep moving. Behind me, someone comes out of the hallway to the bathrooms talking to someone else. I really don't want to see anyone, look at anyone right now, maybe never look at anyone again. I wonder what it takes to become a hermit. You probably have to belong to a church first. I'll just stand here and fiddle with my buttons on my coat till they leave. Why haven't they gone yet? How long can they stand there talking on and on about stupid stuff, and why does he keep calling out the name Bill? Honestly, some people just don't know how to have a private conversation these days. Maybe I can slip out the door while they're talking about this Bill person. I turn around to leave, and my heart stops. It's him, standing right there, looking right at me with those beautiful eyes, a little smile turning up in the corners of his lips. Now he's walking towards me, reaching out his hand and saying, Bill? Bill Morris, isn't it? Without thinking, I take his hand, but who's this Bill Morris? Did he just wink at me? I'm sure you don't remember me. Bruce Atkins. We met at the Atlantic Convention last year. I have no idea what convention he's talking about, but I'm beginning to catch on. 
I let go of his hand and nod knowingly, trying to think of something to say so I won't look like a total idiot in front of his dinner companion. Aha! Not his boyfriend! Just some guy he's having a business dinner with! Fuck yes! Not his boyfriend! Oh, of course. Bruce, how have you been? Great. Just great. Say, it's been a long time. Way too long. Can we get together for lunch or something? Here's my card. Why not give me a call tomorrow and we'll set it up? I don't trust myself to talk again. I nod and wave a little goodbye as they walk out the door just like nothing at all happens. I look at the business card in my hand. Bruce Atkins. What a perfect name. What a fucking perfect name. I knew he'd think of something. I knew he wouldn't just leave me. Not this time. I knew he'd be a great guy. Warm and friendly just like that. With a name like Bruce Atkins. Lunch or something. Right. Or something.